Step one, location, location, location. You need to talk to people. These old timers have all the history and information of where maybe these old dumps were. Dumps that were situated close to the shore were used as landfill. What was thrown away as garbage back then is what's today's treasures. Oftentimes when I've been out metal detecting, I've talked to people who have given me ideas of new places and new areas. Research old local maps to find areas that could have been old watering holes where people would vacation. Dead Horse Bay here in Brooklyn is a phenomenal place to do some mudlarking. This is a great example of an old dump that they used for landfill by the coast that now is a very popular area to go searching for treasures. Step number two is to explore. There's nothing better than getting out there on a nice long hike and keeping your eyes open for certain areas that could potentially have been an old dump, especially areas that tend to flood more often than not. These areas you want to look around because 50 to 100 years ago, they would have dumped bottles and trash in these areas to use as landfill. So I always often get on my bike and cover a lot more distance. I'll look around, I'll search around, I'll mark certain areas, I'll even sometimes get off and look down maybe in a crevice to see if there's even one bottle sticking out. Because until you get down deep in there, you don't really get a good look at what could be a great place. Two of my best areas have been found riding a bike and a third area on just a family hike. In step three, you want to familiarize yourself with the wind and tide charts. On this particular tide chart, you can see on the 22nd, which is today, that we are going to be in a negative tide at 1244 p.m. This negative tide is going to be able to move the water much further out and open up a lot more searching areas in the muddy shoreline. And don't forget to check out your wind maps. The black X is where I do the majority of my mudlarking. The three arrows are the direction of the wind I prefer. Pushing the water back off the beach will expose more treasure hunting areas. Step four, targets that you may find in the beginning will identify areas rich in history. These couple pieces here in the picture can identify an area that has had a long history of people coming to vacation. You have cork top bottles, pottery, brass hinges, clock gears, glass with dates on it. And knowing your relics is really important. This little piece comes off a parasol, which is the umbrellas women used to carry on the beach 75 to 100 years ago. In step five, these are the pieces of equipment I believe you don't want to leave home without. First off, a good three-pronged scraper. It's a great tool to take a quick top layer off the mud and to save your hands from picking up stones and sharp objects. Secondly, a really good pair of boots, especially with a hard sole. All kidding aside, I did at one point have an experience where I was stepping on an old buried boat. And before I knew it, I stepped on a large, sharp brass spike and went right through my flimsy boot, right into the bottom of my foot. That was an immediate day ender. Number three, get yourself a good backpack. You can store water here, and especially if you're looking to pick up bottles, you don't want to find a day where you score a whole bunch of awesome old bottles and you can't carry them all. Now I know this is making it out to be quite an ensemble, but an awesome hip fanny pack to hold smaller treasures and stuff in those pockets is another great idea. A good strong pair of gloves to prevent maybe cutting your hands on some of these sharp objects we try to pick up. I tend not to wear gloves, but it's not the smartest thing in the world, and I know I drive my subscribers crazy. And lastly, a good DEET-free bug repellent. You're going to be in the marsh, you're going to be in the muds, and you don't want to have trouble with 
the black flies or the noceums because that definitely will be another day ender. So thanks for watching this short little video. I hope you found it somewhat informative. I added next a little clip of one of my great finds that I got today. She's just starting to rain on me. I did a line of scraping. Pulled up a whole bunch of interesting things that I'll show in a picture later. And I thought I just found a bottle stopper. It was here a second ago. Now what do I do with it? Oh, there it is. Oh, that cool piece. A nice little flower there. Looks like a clover. There's a little chip in the bottom. I like it. Something right here. Here comes the rain. It's warm out. It can rain on me all day.